Hi, Simon here, and this is Command and Conquer, which came out in 1995. It was followed in 1996 by Command and Conquer Red Alert, which was probably one of my most played games of the 90s. But Command and Conquer is a game worth talking about. Um, I never got to play it that much, because again, I had Red Alert, and before it I had Dune 2, which was uh, the first real-time uh, real strategy game as we know them, made by Westwood as well. Uh, I really, really loved Dune 2. I had it on floppy disks and I had an Acorn with either a DOS or an Amiga emulator on it and I would play Dune 2 uh, over these eight floppy disks I had and I'd effectively have to swap the disks every time I wanted to build every like unit in the game or any building or like any sort of progression, it was just constantly swapping more and discs in and out. In retrospect, it's just, it was awful, um, but I still, I the game was just so good that I would do it. And I wanted to talk about Command & Conquer, because with the discussion of violent video games and things, we often like try and fight back and maybe say, oh, some video games aren't violent, but there's plenty of really good violent video games, and I think Command & Conquer is one of them. The reason why is it's just it's re it should be a required reading for living in this world today. Effectively, you've got a global catastrophic um, ecological disaster uh, caused by this material called Tiberium, which started as a stand-in basically for uh, spice. It's the spice that you would have harvested in a Dune game. Uh, they've repurposed it, they created a backstory, and, you know, I'm sure they were well aware of things like global warming. Global warming had just become a thing in the early 90s, and it's reflecting this, you know, here's an amazing resource for us that we can harvest, um, and it gives us, you know, limitless potential. However, it's killing the planet, and, you know, this unravels uh, during the the length of the game as, as the scientists discover more and more about this thing. Um, but the game has a lot more to say, um, and some of it's deliberate, some of it maybe is just a reflection of what was on the writers' minds. But you've got to remember this was a time that we'd just come out of a Gulf War, and we'd just seen, like, for the first time, war in real time, live feeds from helicopter gunships and uh, smart missiles. Uh, we'd seen atrocities, we'd seen American interventionism fail. I mean, we'd seen that in, obviously in Vietnam, but we were seeing it in real time this time with 24 new hour news cycles. And it was all very weird. And, you know, we'd just seen the siege of Mogadishu. Uh, we've seen Bosnia, the siege of Mogadishu, of course, as you probably remember as Black Hawk Down. And, you know, we were used to seeing Hummers driving around random countries and places and this game just reflects all of this but it also reflects the modern day as well because by reflecting the past it reflects the future and weirdly enough that's actually the takeaway ending of the game but at the same time our modern world is here in this game the protagonist is an authoritarian uh, cult leader called Kane, and he's exactly uh, you know what we're experiencing all around the world with populism. But the fact is, like he's manipulating the media. Um, they have fake journalists giving fake reports against blue screens and sending it out via satellite feed to 24-hour news cycles, and the journalists aren't checking it, and they run it, and it's got, you know, a, a NATO-type organization that, because they play by the rules, they can't deal with this modern type of terrorism. But anyway, let's, uh, <laughs> let's kill this base and uh, get playing the game a bit. So I'm actually playing it, you'll notice, um, in something close to the original resolution, I've, I've doubled up the pixels so my eyes don't bleed on a 1440p monitor, but you'll notice black bars down the side of the screen. There's a lot of um, like modern remakes 
with mod interfaces and things, but I wanted to show you kind of something closer to the original game. The game actually ends up in Sarajevo, uh, which means, you know, Sarajevo at the time was a literal war zone, so clearly the writers were in touch with these things and it wasn't just entirely accidental and um, influenced by osmosis, you say. So I'm just getting my score for the uh, mission that I completed, that was the second mission in the game. Oh, I didn't score so well. Okay. I mean, this map was quite similar to what they had in Dune 2. Um, you get choice of selection, but you don't really get a choice. Kane is going to be pleased to hear how skillfully you've handled yourself. And a word from me to Kane goes a long way in the Brotherhood. These walls imprison many friends and members of the Brotherhood. Free them regardless of cost. Overwhelm the prison, but leave it standing. The FMVs were something I really, really loved in 90s games. In the newer ones, they had characters hamming it up, but I actually kind of like the stilted performances. There's kind of something um, slightly charming about it, I guess. So, base building mechanics. We have our construction yard. We have some scout bikes in this map. I believe these are rocket launcher soldiers. Oh, already under attack. Okay, so this is a mission where you're fighting against grenadiers. There's a lot less control uh, than there is in Red Alert and like later games. Also, uh, at some point in the in the two thousands, um, we decided that left click was not going to be a thing anymore, and everything should be right click. And it's really, really confusing. It's it's like playing a game left handed. So I can't really remember any of the strategies for these games. Um, it's always a good idea to scout near your base. Build a barracks as soon as possible. So you can't queue up um, soldiers. And while that was changed in later games, there's something interesting about this mechanic. It's a kind of, if you think about like free to play mechanics, um, you know, where you have that weight and you are manually required to do that. Yes, it's kind of maybe really, really irritating for the small units that you need dozens of, but at the same time, you've got a really good feedback loop. I mean, these, this is really just a, a timing system. You can make a game that was just entirely clicking these. In fact, you are, that's what the most clicker games are now. So I'm going to build that communications thing, but you're not going to be able to uh, benefit from it because I think I've put my head over it on the capture screen. <laughs> but you can imagine this on that. So I can now see an incoming attack on my base. Unit lost. Unit ready. 
With the units, um, you can get them to drive over each other. Uh, I think by pressing Alt. Yeah. Uh, but it only really works well with large tanks, so I'm not going to go all out on that yet. This being one of the early missions, it's I don't think it's particularly difficult. That said, the AI is quite unresponsive compared to how you'd imagine it would be in a modern game. Red Alert took uh, basically every aspect of the game and made it better. Red Alert is a, a more of a fantasy game though, although it's based in the same timeline, which is maybe a spoiler if you do plan to play the game. Okay, cancel that. Red Alert sits in an alternate timeline where Einstein goes back in time and kills Hitler, and thus the Soviet Union becomes a superpower far earlier. It's hard to talk and play at the same time. But uh, basically, Red Alert took every aspect of Command and Conquer and just, just polished it. And in fact, I think that's a thing that games developers, especially indie developers, need to learn from nowadays, is to, if you have a good thing, um, you know, people used to kind of turn up their nose at sequels, but if, if your sequel's reasonably solid, um, if you've got a really good game mechanism or something, you should try and explore it more. And for instance, putting out a, a sequel that takes the game, changes it in some interesting way, repackages it, is a really good strategy. Um, you know, Command and Conqueror players were really happy that Red Alert came out. Um, no one went, oh, it's more of the same. Because they had entirely new units, and they had an interesting new story. But at the, uh, the core of it, the game didn't really change that much. So I can't remember, but... Can I use oil derricks to collect money? So Westwood got bought out by EA, uh, which I, I, you know how this goes. Um, they did, however, I think I people you know like to say, oh, that was the immediate death of Red Alert and uh, Command and Conquer, but really they they did put out several really good games. Um, Command and Conquer Three was very good. Red Alert Two, of course, was excellent. Um, that happened kind of during the the transfer, as it were, and. As such, it it maybe lost some of the sparkle, but it still did very well, and it was a still incredibly enjoyable game. Oh no, I've I've drawn that ire. I probably need to. Nope. The music um, by oh God, can I say his name? Frank Klopecki uh, is really great. Um, I think the Red Alert soundtrack maybe had a, a more co cohesive feel, um, but there's certainly a lot of life in, in this one. And it really added to the game, because uh, 
I think this was all CD sound, so it was incredibly high quality. There are some very kind of 1990s feel in there, but I, rather than dating the game, it kind of, it gives it a bit of 90s character. Oh no. So one of the strategies, obviously, uh, in CNC or any game like this, is to uh, kill the harvesters. I'm trying to do it without doing that because usually that does count as a kind of a cheeky tactic. Let's see if we can get him to run over this guy. So at this point, I just need to uh, build up a force faster than uh, the enemy is building up a force. There's something about the uh, older CNC games as well that um, they're kind of unlike more slightly more modern games and maybe just kind of the same genre games is that they're not magically balanced. Um, it's not a it's not an esport. They're They're just how they are, and you know some some units can take other units more easily. Um, but it's not set in stone, and there's not like magical a rock paper scissors design choices made. And I, I kind of like that. It's kind of rough. Um, in CNC, maybe it turns a bit too much towards tank rushing. Um, or whatever equivalent Building. strategy that you want to use. But you should build up like kind of mixed squads. And it does help. I think I'm going to build a, another refinery and then a second hand of Nod. Time to destroy this barracks before he destroys me. So, 
as always, destroy their construction yard, and then the rest of his base. Although I have to, I have to capture the prison, don't I? So I need an engineer. An easier strategy for this level would have just been to sneak in the side of his base with an engineer, and I could have probably captured his construction yard. I'd really like, as a developer, to maybe one day make a early CNC clone. Um, I don't think it would be a financial viable kind of thing to make money off, but it would uh, certainly be fun to do. There's a lot of kind of complexities in, in modern games that actually just take away from kind of the core experience. Really, at the end of the day, yeah, so these these are just images laid on with uh, maps that say how where things are possible, and therefore there's like very very few mechanics. But they can you can build quite interesting map layouts, things like choke points and stuff. That otherwise, oh let's just check that isn't the prison I'm supposed to be. I might just sell something uh, to finish off that engineer so we can finish the mission. There we go. While I've sold one of the uh, things, I still have the harvester from it, which is probably more valuable. One of the things I always forget to do is to uh, go to the game controls and just turn up the game speed slightly faster. Especially in the early game. In the later game it's not so much of an issue. Again the game is slow, it gives you time to think, um, it gives you time to control stuff. It's not about being able to click super fast. computer graphics. And some Bradley tanks. So yeah, this was just a, a quick bit of CNC. I think I might do a, a few more videos of me just playing through the campaign. Um, it's really just a really great game. score and I wish people made games like this nowadays so yeah let me know if you'd like to see uh, another uh, couple levels of Command and Conquer maybe some late game ones and I'll talk about more about some of the geopolitical GDI stuff in it war. Not and I'll catch you guys later